Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Fernandez and welcome to my channel, I live to inspire mental health. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, I post weekly videos about mental health and my experience with bipolar disorder. So with that, this week's video is going to be about when I knew I was ready to move out and be on my own um, despite having a mental illness. So I was asked about this, uh, about when I knew I was ready to get out of home because obviously for somebody who has a mental illness, it's a lot harder to move away, to be on your own, to try new things, um, but it's not impossible. I think that definitely a lot of it has also to do with personality. Like I've always been a very independent person. I like to do things on my own. I like to be a grown up. And so here, obviously, once you go to college, it's like you have to get out, especially if you're living out of like the city where your parents live or your family lives. So. I think I wasn't a hundred percent ready. I guess that's what I guess it was that's what it was. In the sense of like there was things that I was going to go through on my own that I didn't know I was going to go through. For example, by living by myself, there was moments where I would be like vomiting because of a medication and my parents weren't there. But I had the help of my roommate, who was one of my closest friends in high school, so that helped a lot. I think I knew I wanted to move out because I wanted to be independent. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen because of my mental illness. Um, and my mental illness has affected my college life, obviously, but I have become more stable. Um, and I think that it's just kind of like once you feel like you're independent, like you're in a good place, like you understand what's your mental illness you understand the things that like are going in your head and not only that but you're responsible about it and it's like that's when you know that you can be on your own um for example i always knew that if there was something wrong with me i had to call my parents i had to call my doctor and i had to do something about it instead of just ignoring it like i couldn't hide it and pretend that i was okay when i wasn't um and there was moments where like my parents came to see me and my mom came and she spent the day with me because i was feeling very sick due to my condition um so ultimately i mean i think you'll never be ready 100% with for something just like the same way that I didn't know when I was going to be ready to share my story with the world but sometimes it's just a matter of this is what I want for myself and it's kind of like doing a check mark like am I healthy right now do I think that I can do I have somebody near me who I can trust and for me I did although I was not close no I could not just go see my parents every day I did have friend here and who I could talk to, um, who I could trust because I started college in a moment where I wasn't telling anybody that I had a disorder, but she knew because I felt like it was important for her to know since she was living with me in case anything did ever happen and she had my parents phone numbers and like all that kind of stuff. So it was like that relationship where if I was vomiting, she was there and she took, she took care of me as best as she could or she would talk to me. Um, I've talked about one time where I had that, I was taking a medication and it was just so bad for me that it made my whole body go numb. I was having like a huge panic attack and my roommate at the time, she's the one that calmed me down. She was just like, you know, think about this and think about that. She knew kind of what to say and how to do it. And like, that's another thing. Like, if you're gonna live in your own, on your own, it's always important to, I think, live with somebody else if you can, especially like if you have a mental illness, it's important to kind of try to be with other people because you never know what could trigger you. You might be fine at one moment and then the other you're not. Just like with bipolar disorder, whenever you're not completely stabilized. And even when you're stabilized, it can be hard sometimes. Um, but what I'm saying is that I had talked to her before that. I had let the people around me, in that case her, understand what was going on with me. If I start saying these things about myself, if I start having negative thoughts and I'm telling you that I hate myself, all these kind of things, understand that I'm about to go through something. I might have an episode, I might have a breakdown, I might get a panic attack. And so, in that way, I prepared her and I prepared myself for the worst case scenarios. So when, if that happened, I would be okay. 
even though I did not live at home anymore, even though my parents weren't there to like, you know, babysit me all the time. At the beginning, I messed up a lot more. I did have to like have those calls with my parents more often and like, um, I needed more hand holding, but ultimately I learned to live to, to live the way that I am right now and it makes me happy and I'm, and I'm okay and it is possible to live on your own um, but as I said before I think it's a checklist in the sense of like do you have somebody around you that you can tell this stuff what's going on to um, do you like can you take care of yourself your your like basic needs like food and sleep and like are you able to do that on your own because when you live with somebody that's another thing uh, when you live with a roommate that person's not gonna be there all the time so those might be things that you're going through and it's like that person has their own life um but if you've learned how to take care of yourself and you have that check mark and you have those phone numbers and you're responsible then i think that's when you know that you're ready to move out and start living on your own and start you know being independent independent responsibly while being mindful of your mental illness because um even even when you're very stable you always have to be conscious of like your thoughts and stuff because things can come up at any time you can get anxiety from something that triggers you um so i think it's it's about that having that checklist and being aware of yourself and uh your responsibilities to your own body and to your own life so with that, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe and share with somebody who you believe should watch this video. And always remember that there is a light at the end of that tunnel and a bad day does not mean a bad life.